Welcome everyone, my name is Majd Tabi and I'm from the Darkroom team. I'm going to show you how quickly you can go through your photos and edit them using Darkroom on iPhone. We'll start with about 50 photos I took on a walk around the neighborhood and we'll end up with only four highlights that are worth editing and exporting. Think of this like a teaser. In future videos, we'll dig into more specific details and workflows and learn how to use Darkroom to its full potential. Let's get these photos imported from my camera and we'll start editing. So the first step is to go through these photos and try to give each photo either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And Darkroom makes this really easy using the flag and reject features. Here's how that works. I tap on the first photo and I swipe right on the toolbar. You'll see that it exposes a flag and a reject button. As I flag and reject, the photos will advance through the collection. In this case, obviously, it was a misfire of my shutter, so I reject it. Here, I like the colors and the shapes um, in this photo, so I'll flag it. And again, when I'm flagging here, it's not. I'm not trying to say, hey, this photo is incredible, the best photo I've ever taken. All I'm trying to say is there's something interesting about this photo. Your goal here is to stay really high level and to do this as quickly as possible. Now, I'm narrating as I go. When you do this on your own, without a video camera in your face, you just keep your hands on the screen and just flag, reject, flag, reject, flag, reject. I, I love that door. You know, I don't know exactly where that door comes from and what it means, but I really, I really love that. And this is an interesting, this is a, this is a loquat tree, which this is a Filipino neighborhood and this fruit is really popular in the Philippines. I don't know that a lot of people in America know about it, but I grew up eating this in Syria, so um, I love it. Uh, this is right outside our front door. Um, I like this photo better at capturing it. And now you saw with the last photo that I flagged that it didn't auto advance. And that's because I reached the end of my album. So now I've got a mix of flagged and rejected photos. I've gone through all of them and given each one a thumbs up or a thumbs down. The next step would be to clean up all of the rejected photos because frankly, I don't care about them anymore. And to do that, I'll simply go back to the library and Darkroom will tell me, hey, 37 photos are rejected, tap to delete. And just like that, we went from 50 photos down to the top photos that are worth moving forward with the next stage of the workflow, which is editing. When starting an editing session, I usually like to start with filters. In this case, I think the L100 filter does a really good job of capturing the aesthetic that I'm going for. Now, that's all this photo needs. So I'll just tap on the actions menu at the top and copy these edits. This is going to allow me to paste these edits on the entire collection, making them all match and be cohesive. To do that, I'll go back to the library and I'll swipe right on all the photos that I want to paste and then simply tap paste. And there you go. Now all my photos look like they're part of a cohesive edited collection. Now, obviously I need to go through them one by one and make per image corrections. In this case, the photo was a little bit tilted. So I'll go to the transform tool and then I'll just correct that rotation. Sometimes I'll look at a photo and think it's great. Sometimes I'll look at a photo and say, you know what? It's a little bit too bright. Let me darken it a little bit. Sometimes I'll look at a photo and it's a little bit too saturated. And at some point, once I'm done going through all the photos, making per image adjustments, I'm pretty much done. Now I have a choice to make. I still have in my library all the photos that I flagged in the beginning of my workflow. And if this collection still feels good to me, then I can, I'm done. <laughs> I can just export and share. But what I typically like to do is to go through it one more time to just really make sure that all the photos in here are top notch. And this is where the critical eye really comes in. Only the best of the best for me, make it through. At this point, you can probably guess what's coming next. We start with the first photo again, swipe right at the bottom to reveal flag and reject, and any photo that doesn't meet that standard gets rejected. This photo still really appeals to me, so I'm gonna keep it around and move on to the next one. Here, the colors are a little bit dull, so I'm gonna reject it. This wasn't telling a story, so I reject it. And that's that, this is the last photo. Now, when I go back to the library, instead of deleting all of the photos that are rejected, I'm going to choose to simply unreject them. And I do that for a very specific reason, which is that I like these photos. Remember they passed my first threshold, so I don't wanna delete them. Some of these I like for personal sentimental value, but they're not good enough to share. So um, if I just unreject them, you'll notice now the distinction is between the unflagged and the flagged photos. 
And that's how I make my distinction between the photos I want to share, like this one, and the photos that I want to keep around but don't want to share, like this photo of a fruit tree that is meaningful to me. Finally, the last step, select the flagged photos I've chosen to share, tap export at the bottom, and I can modify them all at once in place, non-destructively. And as soon as it's done, I can confirm that I want to modify these. And you'll notice that they get an extra icon that says they've been exported. And these photos now are in my photo library, ready to share wherever I want. And that's it. That's my entire photo editing workflow from beginning to end. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you picked up something new from it. And if you have any ideas for what we should talk about in future videos, please leave a comment and let me know. In future videos, we'll get into the import process, the details of the editing process, how to use all the tools and the functionality that comes with Darkroom, all the different export options. There's a ton of information to get into, not least of which is all the new things we're working on that we're really excited to share with you. So please subscribe below, um, tap that bell icon so that you get notified whenever we have a new video and see you soon.